the awesome 5e rule that nobody uses but you really should. Today on Dungeon Crash. Welcome to Dungeon Craft. I'm Professor Dungeon Master, coming to you from beautiful Dungeon University, wearing my plus two vest of protection. And this channel is about playing the ultimate game of D&D and other tabletop role-playing games. And I'm Deathbringer. Level up your game by subscribing and click the bell icon so you'll be informed whenever we upload new content. Look, I'm an old school guy. I remember when Dungeons and Dragons took place mostly in dungeons, and not everyone could cast spells, and characters actually died. But I also like 5e rules, like advantage, disadvantage, inspiration, and the rule we're talking about today, an obscure rule that almost nobody uses and the people that do know about it don't really like, but I'm going to try to persuade you anyway. It's on 263 of the DMG, and it is called Proficiency Dice. Now, don't go just yet. Just give me eight minutes of your time, and let me see if I can't convince you. Here's how it works. Instead of getting a static proficiency bonus, you add D4 to any roll in the things in which your character is skilled. At levels 5 to 8, it increases to D6. At levels 9 to 12, it becomes D8, and so on. Rogues and characters with expertise roll two proficiency dice and pick the higher number. Proficiency dice also replace skills. You can choose to tie that proficiency bonus to two ability scores based on your character's prime requisite and background. So one of my characters is a rogue, so her prime requisite is dexterity. But before she turned a life of crime, she was a stage actress, so she gets a proficiency die on both dex checks and charisma checks, and there are no specific charisma-based skills. For any social encounter, she gets to add her proficiency die to all the roles. Another variant ties proficiency more strongly to a character's background. So let's say a character is a fighter, but she used to be a pirate, so she would get a proficiency bonus on all pirate-themed actions, swinging a cutlass, sailing, navigation, tying knots. So if she's captured and her hands are tied behind her back, the player could say, hey, I was a pirate, I know how to tie knots, so it stands to reason I should get a proficiency bonus to untie myself and escape. To which I would respond, brilliant, go for it! This might seem familiar if you know the game Shadow of the Demon Lord by Robert J. Schwab, published in 2015, because they do skills the exact same way. What you may not know is Robert J. Schwab also worked on the 5th edition, published in 2014. Mike Merles also loves proficiency dice. He's on record as saying it's his favorite rule nobody liked, and that's why it was relegated to variant status on page 263 of the Dungeon Master's Guide. But this may just be a case of a rule being too far ahead of its time. I've been contacted by so many people on Facebook and Patreon saying, you ought to check out the skill system in Shadow of the Demon Lord. It's really innovative. And what they don't realize is 5e actually did it first. And I try this with my players, and they absolutely love it. I often experiment with new rules, and they're always greeted with a groan. But by the end of this session, everyone was cheering. They loved it. They understood it. It felt natural and, I, and organic. It sped up the play. And for the next session, I returned to the standard proficiencies, and you could feel the energy level drop. It was like watching paint dry. It just wasn't as dynamic. Rolling dice is dynamic. It's why everyone loves shouting Yahtzee. It also speeds up the character creation process because you don't have to waste time allocating all these skill points and tool points. And it declutters the character sheet to make it accessible for new players. They're not overwhelmed by all these numbers. This is the character sheet I use, designed by the great Hanker Infernail over at Runehammer. It's just a simple proficiency box in the upper right-hand corner, and I remind players anytime they do something related to their character's profession or background, they add that bonus die to their role. I've seen people on the internet say, well, this probably works with experienced players, but it wouldn't work with newcomers. It'd be too confusing. Quite the opposite, in fact. It's so accessible for newcomers because you could say to them, what type of character do you want to play? And they can give you an archetype like, I want to be Legolas. And you say, great. You are an elf, you shoot a bow, you can ride a horse. Anything that Legolas would do, you add your proficiency die to the role. Or you could have someone play Catwoman. Like, that's a rogue. Like, anything the Catwoman could do. She can climb, she can hide, she can sneak. Any of that stuff, you get the proficiency bonus. And you don't have to get into the game jargon. Like, whenever you have a new player play and show up at your game, what do you give them to play? You give them a fighter, because it's easy to understand. But that shouldn't be. A new player should be able to take on the role of an experienced character and not be locked out or limited because they don't know what those specific skills and that game jargon means. 
Some people object to the random element, like you have a 1 in 4 chance of actually getting lower than if you used static initiative, but you have a 50% chance of getting greater than that. And that makes your characters actually more powerful. I mean, some people might object because they just feel that they have bad dice mojo, but look, you're rolling dice for everything anyway. Plus, I think it's more realistic. Like, I'm proficient at archery, but my ability to aim is not a static thing, unless I'm shooting at a static target. If I were actually in a battle, there would be a whole bunch of other factors like the weather and the wind velocity and is a screaming guy heading straight for me with an axe. And the proficiency die kind of takes that into account. The more powerful objection, I think, is the idea that as your proficiency die increases, you actually have a greater chance of screwing up. So on a D4, at first level, you only have a 25% chance of getting lower than your average proficiency. But if you were 10th level and you're rolling that D8, well, you would get a, a penalty on a 1, 2, or 3 that's better than a 25% chance. So in a way, as you're getting more powerful, you have the potential to get worse. Point taken, but I still think the fun factor outweighs the potential downsides. I don't play D&D past 8th level anyway, and I suppose you could allow some players to use the proficiency dice and some to elect to just use the standard bonus, like some players are allowed to choose average hit points instead of rolling. But come on, where's the fun in that? Live a level. If you're going to always take the average hit points and the average proficiency, why not have a rule that says instead of rolling the d20, you could just take an average 10 and add your bonuses on top of that. Dice are what makes the game dynamic and fun, and yes, there's risk involved, but you're not really risking anything. I mean, people invest in stock market and Bitcoin and go to Atlantic City or Las Vegas and they risk real money. You can't risk a few points on a 20-sided die. So if proficiency dice are so great and fun and innovative, why didn't they make the official cut? Why is this rule relegated to the back of the DMG? In my opinion, Mike Merles and the 5e design team couldn't afford to take risks. Their lunch was getting eaten by Pathfinder and they were charged to deliver a version of Dungeons and Dragons that was faithful and familiar to the older concepts so that it was instantly accessible to older and new players alike. But as time moves on, this rule looks better and better as fans of Shadow of the Demon Lord will attest. I urge you to try it for a couple of sessions starting with your next session and see if you don't see the energy level rise. But that's what I think. What do you think? Share your ideas in the comments below. Also below you'll find a link to my module McDeath available at questgivers.com and Dungeon Craft on Facebook and Patreon where you can get a copy of that character sheet and watch my players having an amazing time playing with their proficiency dice. And for more great rules hacks you can check out these videos over here. I'll see you there. May all your rolls be 20s. Deathbringer again. That guy sure is proficient and blathering about nonsense. For more of this vested imbecile, click on these videos. 